Hey guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today we're going to cover a topic that a uh, subscriber on my YouTube channel posted. He wanted to know how to size a ring and not change the size of the head or stone because obviously if you have them all in one piece, you hit the size button to size it with the S key. It's going to size the uh, the place where the stone goes. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of that today. I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up, share, like, subscribe. Any little bit that you do helps my channel grow. Thanks. Let's get started. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my library here. I've, I've got a library and I'm still working on getting up online for you guys. It'll be online shortly. Um, I'm going to add in a diamond. We're going to do a princess stone here. Uh, it's right over to the left. There it is. Click on that. We'll append it. We'll add it into our settings here. What I want to do to this is kind of get it sized correctly so that uh, this stone ends up being about 5.5 millimeters. So I'm just going to size this up to 5.5 millimeters here. Once I get the stone set to 5.5 millimeters, just where I want it, the next step is to add in the head. And again, I'm going to go to my library I'm going to go to the head section and uh, add in the correct size head or the, the correct shape head in this case. We want a square and I'll pick that from the menu below. We'll do the same, we'll just append it. Here I'm just going to place uh, all my objects in the center. So I want to set the origin to the center of the mass of the object and I'm just going to locate it in the center of the screen. That way I'm working in a good orientation. Here I'm turning on the move parameter so that I can adjust the position of the stone and the, and the head. And just look around what I've got here. Again, I'm piecing this together so uh, the beauty part of this is that with the library, I've got all these objects already made and as I've added more and more objects to this library, you'll be able to uh, uh, purchase this in a very short period of time. You could also make your own objects if you wanted to customize a little bit of uh, your own pieces with specific looks. Okay, so once I've placed the stone on the head about where I want it, I want to grab a uh, mounting. And what I'm looking for here is just a plain mounting. And I kind of went to the wrong spot, but uh, I'm going to go grab a plain mounting out of the mountings library. And if the uh, visuals on this is looking a little bad, I apologize. I'm using a, an older PC and... Uh, just to get this working. It was the only place I could record today. Unfortunately, it was a little busy at my house, so I didn't have a quiet place to work. So here I've imported a plain band, and now I want to size this up to, uh, well, I, I usually start with a ring size of approximately seven. So once I've got this placed properly, I will uh, add in a cube. And I'm going to size that cube just as a reference down to approximately 17 millimeters square. 17 millimeters is approximately a size 7. So I can put that on the screen, adjust my band size to fit the, uh, the square so that the cube is actually on the inside of the ring. And that gives me an approximate size 7. Once I get that ring size to where I want it, I'll get rid of the cube. And you can see I'm just making some little minor adjustments here. Okay, let's get rid of the cube here. Now I'm left with the ring, the head, and the stone. So again, what I'm doing is I'm actually working with a stone that's five and a half millimeters. 
I've sized the head to be um, encompassing the stone. So the head it would be cast for a five and a half millimeter stone, which gives me the proper setting. I'm leaving the ring, the, the shank itself, disconnected from the head because I don't want the head to be sized when I make any adjustments for the ring shank. So if I wanted to make this ring again, but I wanted to make it for a size 5, I could just size the ring shank down, adjust it, and then join it later for 3D printing and then casting. That's really the proper way to do this if you're going to do a piece over and over again and you wanted to make multiple sizes. Now you can see I'm just going to kind of tweak the band a little bit. I'm going to make it a little wider. Um, here I made it a little, about three and a quarter millimeters wide, which is a good size. It's, uh, that would not be a small ring. And I'll make some uh, width changes to the upper part of the shank and get this ready. So I'm zooming in here. I'm going to use some proportional sizing. I showed you how to do that in a previous lesson, so if you didn't get a chance to see it, go back and look at the, uh, the Scared series where jewelers shouldn't be afraid to work with Blender, and you'll see a section on proportional sizing. Go ahead and watch that video. I'm grabbing a, a loop here because that loop is going to allow me to make the top part or the upper part of the shank where the head attaches just a little bit wider along the y-axis. So I'm turning on the proportional editing you can see my influence circle is right there, so making that bigger or smaller will adjust the size and influence of how much I want that shank to size up a little bit. And I'm just eyeballing it here. There's no real uh, method to my madness. I just go for a visual appeal. And once I've got it about where I like it, then I can uh, make any more adjustments I want to make tweak anything I want to tweak from here. So again, like I said, I'm working with a stone. Let's say a customer brings you a stone and it's 5.5 millimeter or you have a stone that's five and a half millimeter and you make the head to go with that stone. And now you can play with your ring shank and you can see just by grabbing the ring shank, I can size it up and down. I can make it a little wider, narrower and do whatever I want solely to the ring shank without making any adjustments to the head and thus keeps the size of the placement for the stone intact to the original stone. So that's the key here. Don't join your objects together for 3D printing and getting them ready for casting until you've completely designed your ring. In most cases what I'll do is after I have designed this before I actually attach everything or connect everything I will save the uh, completed ring as a Blender file and then I can join all the objects and then export it as an STL file for 3D printing. That gives me the option to go back, reload that file and make any necessary changes that I want to make, especially if it's just a ring size or uh, if somebody wants some special engraving in there then I can actually 3D cut out some you know somebody's name for instance or I could actually engrave 14 karat gold into the mold and uh, that way it's done at casting. So here I'm just joining the objects you can see now they're all one complete object and I can export that as an STL. Now if I size this object here you can see the head sizes with the ring and we don't want that to happen. If you do that and you make that mistake, you can always press the uh, Command-Z or Control-Z, depending on your if you're using a Mac or a PC, and cancel out that, that part of it. You can see I just uh, undid what uh, I had done with the Join tool, and that way I can make changes to the ring size. So getting them all designed and s getting your object, whatever it is, uh, in pieces on the screen just the way you want it, save that file so that everything still remains you know all unattached and then you can go back and make any changes you want later this is just about ready for 3d printing so i'm going to get ready and uh, export this out as an stl file and we're going to go throw this in the printer and see how well it works 
I hope you like this video. I hope that helped, guys. If it did, give me a thumbs up. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I appreciate all the views that you guys have given me and all the sharing you guys have done on my videos. It really helps my channel grow. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good day. Thanks guys for taking the time to watch some of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. I really appreciate any uh, sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with uh, my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website, I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care guys, happy watchmaking and jewelry making.